Failure is a state of mind, mind, mind. Therefore, it is something an individual can control until he neglects to exercise this privilege, privilege, privilege. Welcome back to River Queen Conjure. No Narc Network TV and Oshun Ajay exclusive. I am the Oracle. Oshun Ajay, can you believe we've made it this far, my people? This is Dissecting the Devil Lesson 25. Check it out. Nature does not force people to fail. But nature does impose her law of hypnotic rhythm upon all minds, and through this law gives permanency to the thoughts which dominate those minds. So nature, through the law of hypnotic rhythm, um, gives permanency to all of the thoughts that dominate your mind, okay? And understanding this going forward, we should understand the importance of disciplining our minds and being very mindful of the energy, frequency, and vibrations of the thoughts that we are thinking. In other words, failure thoughts are taken over by the law of hypnotic rhythm and made permanent if the individual accepts any circumstances as being permanent failure. So whether you're thinking, I don't want to fail, um, I hope I don't fail, I'm afraid to fail, be very mindful of the fact that these are still thoughts of failure, okay? These are still failure thoughts that will be um, taken over by the law of hypnotic rhythm and become a circumstance in your life that inevitably leads to disappointment. Okay, so the solution here is to first understand the, you know, the enormous power of your mind and to discipline the mind to think only of the things that you wish to bring into fruition, the things that you wish to experience, the things that you wish to see made manifest. And this is due to the fact that that same law just as readily takes over and makes permanent thoughts of success, of success, of success. What part, then, does failure play in helping an individual break the grip of hypnotic rhythm after that law has been fastened upon his mind? Failure brings a climax in which one has the privilege of clearing his mind of fear and making a new start in another direction. Once you've faced and lived through your worst fears and allowed them to break you wide open, those fears are removed from you. Your energy is renewed, your mind is renewed, and you become fearless in your approach towards attracting now, understanding the magnetism of the mind, everything that you want out of this life, okay? Failure proves conclusively that something is wrong with one's aims or the plans by which the object of these aims is sought. Failure is the dead end of the habit path one has been following, and when it is reached, it forces one to leave that path and take up another thereby creating a new, a new, a new rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. Failure is the dead end of the habit path that one has been following, um, such as one being caught up in, you know, the, the negative habit or hypnotic rhythm of a narcissistic relationship. Um, those always reach a dead end to the point where um, you, you're not, you're no longer growing, okay? So you're no longer learning, you're no longer expanding in this relationship. So once you've reached that dead end, you're usually forced, okay, to take up a different path, okay, which in turn creates another rhythm okay so a lot of times when these relationships come to an end um, whatever it may not be a twin flame relationship it may be a relationship with a, a job it may be a relationship with a family member you know it may be a relationship with a habit that you have once you've reached the dead end of that that path um, you're forced to go on another path. So a lot of times um, it's a shocking um, change of circumstances, but it usually ends up being a blessing in disguise because it's forcing you to create a different rhythm, okay? Yeah, usually once you've been on a negative habit path, such as hypnotic rhythm in a relationship, um, you usually begin to create a different rhythm that is coming from a place of you being better, stronger, and wiser because of what you've gone through, okay? But failure does more than this. It gives an individual an opportunity to test himself, wherein he may learn how much willpower he possesses. 
You do this by deciding that it's not the end of the story, okay? You are not defeated, but you are inspired to get up and try again, understanding that before every success, there have been many failures and disappointments, okay? So when you decide to get up and try again, you're giving yourself the opportunity to test your own power, okay? Failure also forces people to learn many truths they would never discover without it. For an empath, failure usually appears uh, when they are forced to accept that they cannot heal certain people and forced to accept um, the truth of the inherent um, you know, evil that exists within the world, okay? The narcissist, um, when they fail um, at upholding a false image, then they are usually forced to accept the truth of themselves um, you know, as something that is not inherently good as well. Failure often leads an individual to an understanding of the power of self-discipline, without which no one could turn back after having once been the victim of hypnotic rhythm. Failure in being able to control the narcissist's behavior um, does teach you the importance of being able to control your own behavior, okay? And the Gray Rock Method is a, a self-disciplinary uh, method that was developed by narcissistic abuse survivors to help you control yourself in situations where the narcissist is out of control. Okay. Why is it so hard to deal with a narcissist in the first place? Why can't we just have a normal conversation with them? Well, by nature, they're wired to instigate drama, to manipulate you, and generally to do whatever they can to make every situation all about them and getting the supply that they need. Of course, this is frustrating and exhausting for everybody involved. Anybody who's trying to deal with a narcissist will find themselves wanting to pull their hair out at some point. So what do you do? How do you deal? Well, there's only one thing you can do, and that's the gray rock method. So gray rocking is a technique used when dealing with a narcissist. If no contact is uh, not an option and you're low contact because you share business or share children or have things that you're still resolving from the relationship. It's also a technique that can be used while still in a relationship with a narcissist or out of a relationship with narcissists when they try gaslighting. Gray rock is an excellent coping mechanism. The technique allows you to diffuse the narcissist's gaslighting, temper, manipulations by simply not responding to it and becoming not so much cold, I would say, as just less responsive or not responsive to the drama they're trying to stir up. To hold back emotion is to, you know, not express your quote unquote colors, okay? And so the premise of the gray rock method is to harden yourself against the narcissist's attempts at triggering you into an emotional response, hence the analogy of the gray rock, okay? It's basically giving monotone, emotionless responses because they'll lose interest more quickly that way. It slows down the temper so they get their way in a sense because they say what they want to say without any argument or debate. But truthfully, you're just kind of not listening, not listening, not listening. So basically it's a technique that you use which gives them no emotion, no nothing if they're trying to create emotion from you and they're trying to you know make you angry or start an argument or upset you in some way you just go gray rock the narcissist toolbox is going to be packed full of different manipulation tactics and yeah it's true you won't believe how many different ways they'll actually try and you won't believe how low they'll sink to get you to crumble or cry or whatever reaction they're seeking for supply that day. You may be being told all sorts of things that you're doing wrong and being criticized and really you realize the narcissist is projecting and gaslight, gaslight, gaslighting you. You're just no emotion. Instead of reacting, which is our first indication, you could simply, okay, just like that. The point is to simply diffuse the situation so you can walk away and go about your day. Engaging with a narcissist in any sort of disagreement, argument, or, or anything like that will only create an escalating situation where instead of spending five minutes listening to someone go on and on and then walking away, it can be three and five hours, it can end in silent treatment, it can end in all sorts of things. This, this 
slows it all down by speeding it up. It sort of retrains them to consider you boring to deal with or to argue with and causes them to try something else or to go and complain, complain, complain to someone else. You're not giving them supply, you're not giving them what they want, you're not fueling any drama and that's not feeding the narcissist what they need. They become dissatisfied, they become less engaged and less interested in you and that honestly is the ideal. It can be really difficult to begin because we feel the need to be heard and we want to be validated and we want our side of the story to be important. But the truth is with a narcissist that won't happen. Because basically you're going to kind of send them elsewhere for the drama factor that they're searching for. So they're only going to try to connect with you on a level of this is how we're going to communicate. This may take time. I would say Grey Rock is a very useful technique when you have to be in contact with a narcissist, but it is also not something long-term for a lifestyle. It is difficult to never have your voice heard. I mean, the truth is your voice isn't going to be heard with a narcissist anyway, but it's difficult to live that way long-term. The very first rule is don't ever tell the narcissist that you're using this method because then they're going to actively do whatever they can to like sort of break your concentration, break your focus. If they know that you're trying a technique on them or trying a method on them, they will definitely do anything in their power to stop you from doing that. This technique, while it can be super valuable, has a place. You don't want to ask questions of the narcissist and you certainly don't want to offer any sort of committed answer. Just say things like, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. Or, I know one of Angie's things that she says is, that's interesting. No emotion. That's interesting. No nothing. Interesting, interesting, interesting. During the conversation, try to remain as distracted as possible. But the other thing you can do, and I said this before, is look at their forehead, look at the top of their head, look at the nose, look at the mouth, never look them in the eyes. It gives them some extra power somehow. Be careful with gray rocking because some lower range narcissists will take this refusal to engage with them in their insanity as a form of disrespect. They may up the ante and try to become increasingly belligerent or manipulative. And if, if you allow them to win, then this won't work. You must hold it out. If you are able to just get up and walk away, then do that. If you're not, then just gray face it. That's very interesting. Hmm. It's interesting that you say that. You know, you don't give them any sort of emotional anything because that's exactly what they're going for. Study the lives of all people who achieve outstanding success in any calling and observe with profit that their success is usually in exact ratio to their experiences of defeat before succeeding. Is this all you have to say of the advantages of failure? No, I have barely begun. If you want the real significance of adversity... Failure, defeat, and all other experiences which break up a human being's habits and force him to form new habits. Watch nature at her work. Nature uses illness to break the physical rhythm of the body when the cells and organs become improperly related. Once in a century pandemic that would shut down virtually the entire economy, put half the world under lockdown, kill more than a hundred thousand Americans, and be the leading cause of mortality for weeks at a time... She uses economic depressions to break the rhythm of mass thought when great numbers of people become improperly related through business, social, and political activities. Businesses have been closed, earning no profit. 22 million Americans have filed for unemployment benefits. Airlines are making huge losses. Government debt is soaring to all-time highs. And a lot of negative things when it comes to the economy are taking place. And she uses failure to break the rhythm of negative thought when an individual becomes improperly related to himself in his own mind. And I think we're going to beat that 100,000 deaths. Can you believe that? It looks like we'll be at about a 60,000, a 60,000, a 60,000 mark. Today, we are expecting to cross that 100,000 threshold, 100,000 Americans to have lost their lives. Which is 40,000 less than the lowest number thought of. Minimal numbers, we're gonna be 100,000 people and we're gonna be hopefully far below that. Comparing what's happening in Mississippi or Alabama to what we saw here in New York City, and the scale hopefully will never be the same, but it doesn't have to be as bad as New York or half as bad or as 10th as bad to be really, really, really bad, really bad, really bad. Observe carefully, and you will see that everywhere in nature there is always at work a natural law which gives eternal change to all matter, all energy, and to the power of thought. The only permanent thing in the universe is, is change. Eternal, 
inexorable change, through which every atom of matter and every unit of energy has the opportunity to properly relate itself to all other units of matter and energy. And every human being has the opportunity and the privilege of properly relating himself to all other human beings, no matter how many mistakes he makes, or how many times or in what ways he may be defeated. So through change, every unit of energy has the opportunity to properly relate itself to all other units of energy and matter. Okay, this includes the human being. So what he's speaking of in its essence is spiritual alchemy. Okay, and this begins with the human being deciding to transmute a negative energy into a positive energy or vice versa. And that begins with the decision narcissist, okay, to change. Okay? Okay, and when you make that decision to change, you are essentially giving yourself a new opportunity to achieve spiritual harmony and properly relate yourself to other human beings. Okay? When mass failure overtakes a nation, such as the 1929 World Business Depression, or the coronavirus outbreak of 2020, the circumstance is in perfect harmony with nature's plan to break up man's habits and give out fresh opportunities. Fresh opportunities to do what, you ask? Fresh opportunities to decide to make a change, to transmute any negative energies that you have within yourself so that you may achieve spiritual harmony and properly relate yourself to other human beings, money, food, and any other area of your life that is not in harmony with your desires. What you are saying intrigues me. Am I to understand that hypnotic rhythm has something to do with the way people relate themselves to one another? That abstract, elusive thing called character is nothing but a manifestation of the law of hypnotic rhythm. Therefore, when speaking of one's character, it would be proper to say his thought habits have been crystallized into a positive or a negative personality. Through hypnotic rhythm, one is good or bad because of the knitting together of his thoughts and deeds through hypnotic rhythm. And at any time, you can consciously take control of the thoughts that you think and discipline yourself to do different deeds, thereby changing the rhythm by which you are hypnotized. Okay? One is bound by poverty or blessed with abundance because his aims, plans, and desires, or lack of them, have been made permanent and real by hypnotic rhythm. Is that all you have to say of the connection between hypnotic rhythm and human relationships? No, I have just begun. Remember, while I am talking, I am speaking of the influence of hypnotic rhythm in connection with all human relationships. Men who succeed in business do so entirely because of the way they relate, they relate, they relate themselves to their associates and to others outside of the business. My next guest is a 16-year-old entrepreneur uh, who made national headlines uh, setting up an illegal candy business that he ran out of the bathroom of his school. And get this, he made about $33,000. You have got to respect the hustle. Thank you very much. Uh, all the way from England, everybody, please welcome Nathan John Baptiste. Professional men who succeed do so largely because of the manner in which they relate themselves to their clients. Twelve different employees who go to three different schools, and every single morning we would sort of dish out all the sweets um, during the morning, and they'll come back to me at the end of the day with the profits they made. We had an actual shop in a boy's toilet as well. It is much more important for the lawyer to know people and to know the laws of nature than it is to know the law. And the doctor is a failure before he starts unless he knows how to relate himself to his patients so as to establish their faith in him. Marriage succeeds or fails entirely because of the manner in which the participants relate themselves to one another. Proper relationship in marriage begins with a proper motive for the marriage. Most marriages do not bring happiness because the contracting parties neither understand nor attempt to understand the law of hypnotic, hypnotic, hypnotic rhythm, 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 rhythm. This ends lesson 25, my people. If you haven't gotten caught up on lessons 1 through 24, I do suggest that you get caught up. If you wish to join us in the private Emerald Tablet book study, uh, we are on lesson 6, 
on Oshun Aj exclusive on Patreon and on Badass Witch exclusive on Subscribe Star. You can find those links in the description. If you wish to support the No Narc Network, visit the Survivor Shop, uh, and you can get uh, No Narc Network merch. Okay, and that link is also in the description. If you wish to support the channel with the donation, the PayPal and Cash App links are also there. The super chat is always on, and I will see you guys at Lesson Twenty. Six. Peace.